Hello, I'm Betty McNitt, and um, I am today working on, this will be my last day, day 15, of the six-day supernova blanket with the Ridgy Didge Stripe. And um, it's been um, a journey. I've done this entire project from start to finish on my videos, which has been fun, but has also made it take longer. So that's why I'm on day 15, when normally I think that this would just be maybe like a seven to 10 day project at the most. I probably could have done it in six days if I really wanted to, but um, here it is and I'm gonna be overhead. I just have one round to go. I'm gonna do a one more border round. So I think I'm gonna do um, uh, front post half double crochet all the way around and then three in the peaks. So that's going to be my, that's going to be my edge. So let me just get, um, let me just put, I'm going to put TikTok overhead and then I'll get started. <clears throat> there we go. Hi, Pat. So if you hear me talking to people and you don't see the comments, um, then they might be commenting on another platform. So I have commenters on three different platforms. I've got YouTube, um, TikTok, and Facebook. And face my Facebook group is usually pretty quiet. They don't comment that much from over there. But also, if you are commenting from the Facebook group, I can't see who you are. Um, uh, you have to tell me your name uh, because it, it it doesn't disclose your name because you're inside of a private group. Um, so the yarn for this project is Lion Brand Mandala Bonus Bundle. And the name of the color is Chewy. And I am on my third cake. Um, I am making a full-size blanket. It came out to be about, um, well, I measured it. I measured it the other day and I think it was about 68 to 70 inches. I don't remember um, exactly how big it was, but it was around 70 inches, 68 to 70 inches. And that was before I put the border on. Um, and uh, I've been using a Furls Odyssey eye hook, which I believe is a five and a half millimeter hook. And I've also been using scented stitches. 70 inches is what I said. Okay, 70 inches. Scented stitches stitch balm, which is an aromatherapy balm. You put it on your finger or wherever you tension the yarn. And the yarn picks up the scent and makes your project smell really nice. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yesterday, I put uh, an edge round on here and then I could kind of couldn't decide it might kind of keep going or not and I did decide that I was going to do one more round yeah. um, I think that Pat or somebody who was commenting agreed with me and said go ahead and use up your yarn um, okay so I'm going to flip it over because I want to do a front post and um, post stitches and I don't like doing uh I I don't like doing what don't I like <laughs> I don't like doing back post double crochet so let me do what I did before so I'm going to flip it and I'm going to do front post I'm going to do front post half double crochet all the way around and I'm going to do three half double crochet in the peaks okay so I'm going to pull the yarn from the front to the back I'm going to slip stitch and then I'm going to turn hi star I'm currently working on your six day star blanket I'm loving it so far you're oh you're great and your name is star that's awesome Okay, let me do a slip stitch and I'll slip stitch around this like I did before and then chain two. That's how I'll do it. And then half double crochet, front loop, half double crochet in each of these stitches. And then, um, 
half front loop, half double crochet, three in the peak. I think I might have done double crochet in the peak when I did this. Let's try that. Let's try double crochet in the peak. I think I did half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. I don't know what I'm remembering having done this on, but I did it on something. And then I'm going to skip the single crochet and then half double crochet, front post, half double crochet. And then half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet in the space. I forgot that front post double front post takes longer. Okay, let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. It gives it a little more body. And I think I did this on one of the Starros. The Starro or the Super Starro. Ooh, lemony. Oh. Okay. Let me get settled in. This could be a long night. Nah. It's just one row. Half double crochet. Front loop, half double crochet. I messed up my yarn too. I know it's going to tangle like crazy. <sighs> there we go. It says your connection is great. Well, great. What do we think of this edge? I think it needs a little body because see how they just like the these little points just kind of curl down. Hi. Hey, I thought you were finished. What does the half double crochet add to the border? Well, I, um, last night when I ended, I, um, was on the fence about doing another round. So I did decide to add one more round to the border and give it a little more body. And I also wanted to create, I wanted to do another ridge. I wanted it to have a ridge, like the ridge, um, round that I put in. Plus I have all this yarn, so I might as well use it. So I'm doing front post half double crochet. And then in the points I'm doing half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. I know it's really cool, right? I didn't even make it up. My people in my group 
came up with it. Um, on round six, you either turn the blanket over and um, you work front post double crochet instead of double crochet, or you just keep working on the same side and do back post double crochet. So you can go back and watch the um, replays of these videos with me working on it, and I show exactly how I did it. I flipped it because I don't like doing back posts. I prefer front posts. I'll do it on the next blanket. This first blanket was a challenge. Yeah, it's um, uh, just take your time, take it easy. Which one are you doing? Are you doing the supernova as your first one? Hey, Andrew, how are you? Whoops. Doing a regular star had to frog a couple of times. Well, just holler if you need help with it. I'm here, and then I don't remember if you joined my Facebook group. You can always post there, post a photo, and we will look at it and tell you what you're doing. Hi, it's Lion Brand Mandala Bonus Bundle. And the name of the color is Chewy. I don't know what's going on here. This is frozen. There we go.
Thank you, Andrew. How's your um how's your chevron blanket coming along? I have to adjust my chair. You did a color change. Nice. The 60s Supernova Blanket. I feel like every time I get up and sit back down in this chair, it squeaks even more. Hey, Miss Jacqueline, how you doing? Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you, Facebook user. I know it did, didn't it? That's all right. We'll catch up. I haven't forgotten about our project, our collab. I'm doing great. I'm headed up to, um, uh, I'm headed up north on Wednesday. I'm the director of Small Plates Choreography Festival. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. So we haven't done a show in four years. This is our first one in four years. And I'm I'm excited and I'm nervous. I thought you said you were a dancer too. Yes, it's modern. I don't have a TikTok, but I have an Instagram. Were you, I saw on your um, TikTok, were you in, were you somewhere in Texas going to a yarn store?
Was it in Dallas? Nancy's Knits in Houston. That looked amazing. It looks like it's even bigger than Webb's or about the same size. Very big. Hi, Amy. How have you been? What kind of dance did you um did you do, Jacqueline? And do you, do I remember right? You have a sister too. Did you both dance? One, two, I'm on my third peak. I'll have to go back into the and look at the um look at the star. I think I put this on either the star starro or the super starro. This same border. Here I thought I was doing something new. One of the most difficult things to pack to decide on and pack up when I'm going on a trip is what I'm going to take to work on. And I have not decided what I'm going to take to work on. Isn't that kind of scary? <laughs> Shouldn't I know? Shouldn't I have something in mind? What is wrong with me? I feel like, um, I feel really at a loss. I feel like I should have something ready to go.
I've really been wanting to work on like scarves and uh, things like that. I haven't done a scarf in a really long time. I feel like you always need at least two projects. Girl. That's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> and then what happens is that I will um, end up not working on them at all. Oh, Amy, I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, man. I'm so sorry for your loss. You always travel with a new project. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, I'm just thinking about what I, what I want to work on. It's just been crazy. Thankfully, I have five paid days off. Oh, that's good. How's your daughter doing with this? One, two, three. This is the fourth one. Four down, ten to go. Well, I, I mean, I do agree with the two projects thing, because what if you start one project and you decide that you don't have the right hook or it's just not working out the way you want it to? You need uh, something from home, you know, look a new, up a new, you know, like what if it, um, <clears throat> you know. 
What if one doesn't work out? Then you're stuck. I usually have a mosaic crochet project and one that I can do when I'm stressed and fatigued. Yeah, when I'm on the road, I like to have something small and fairly mindless. Like, um, I like the um, Metro North traveling scarf is a, a design that I did a few years ago. And I've had some ideas about adapting it uh, that I was working on. Oh gosh, how long ago was it that I was working on that? I feel like it's been more than a year. And then I set it down. Um, it went into a pile of something and never came back out. So maybe I'll fish that out and work on it. Um, But it was um, like I have this. I have this pattern. The way the pattern works is it's a triangle scarf, but you start it on the side, one of the long corners, and then you increase out, and then you decrease. It's like that. It's shaped the same way as that pattern. Find your fade. It's shaped like that, and. Um, it's nice. It makes a nice big scarf. You can make it up in, you know, it's like a lot of my patterns. It's adaptable. You can make it in different sizes with different yarns. And um, I had, I have a couple of these scarves that I made when I was um, trying to develop that pattern, trying to figure it out. And the patterns went wrong, but I just kept going for like a really long time. I don't know why I thought it was just thought it was going to work out, I guess. And then I kind of set them aside and started over. And then one day I decided I'm just going to weave in the ends on these and wear them. <laughs> and they were like one of them I was calling Metro Knot and the other one. I had another name for the other one. And um, so I was wearing those around. I still have one of them here. And I had um, I had one of them on at um, I was I was visiting family. And my niece, Camille, who might be watching this right now, she's been popping into these lives. She said, I like your scarf. She has this, one of those high voices. I really like your scarf. So I took it off right there and I gave it to her. <laughs> I put it on her. Um, and uh, I let her take it with her. And after that, I thought, you know, that scarf is kind of cool. It has a nice shape. Um, I should try and replicate that. So that's when I started with this idea about I could do a Metro North, you know, like a triangle scarf that has a longer shape, a longer um, kind of shape because you can wear it a little bit. It's more like a scarf than a shawl. So anyways... That's what I was thinking there.
So that project has been kind of calling back out to me lately. But I think the thing I like about the um, the pattern, the way that I've done it, is you go, you know, it's great for those two when you go to like a, when you go to a show or sheep and wool show or something and there's all this beautiful hand dyed yarn and you're like, I don't know what to get. And I always pick up two of something because I know I can make Metro Noir with it because you can go one you can do one and you do you work the increases with the first half of the yarn and then when you run out of the first skein you start the decreases with the second skein and it works out perfectly you always have you always have enough yarn and it uses up like most of the yarn um and there was only one time that we did it that it didn't work that there wasn't enough yarn to uh, to go around the edge of the um, and it was the the tester who did it um, added a lot of textured stitches to the project so that's why we thought it didn't work. Hi Nikki, it's the six day supernova blanket and this is the last. I'm on my last round here. I thought last night might be the last round, but I decided to do one more round. Whoops. Oh, you're so welcome. Make sure you tag me um, when you show it off. I'd really love to see it. One, two, three, four, five. This is my fifth one. Going on to the sixth one. Ooh, I'm going to be done really soon. I'm almost halfway around this round, this uh edge. I'm excited. Maybe I'll take like some random things that need finished up with me. Like I have a tree skirt here that's almost all the way done, but it just needs a, um, I never completed the border. It was another one. I did the whole thing on a live, 
but I never completed the border and the border takes a ding dong long time to do um, because it's one of those um, candy cane it's twisted fringe candy cane but it's been sitting here on my pile of stuff I mean, that's one thing I could do. I could just take things that just need, you know, a little bit of finishing up. And then I won't have to think. I can just pull it out and be like, let me just crank out a couple rows on this. But I am kind of afraid that if I take a project of that nature, that I really won't work on it. I won't feel inspired to work on it. I've been known to stop at a storm by yarn. I definitely don't need <laughs> any more yarn. Definitely don't need to do that. <clears throat> stop and buy yarn and hooks. I'll figure something out. But it I finished weaving in the ends on uh something. Well, Actually, I think I still have ends on that one star, uh, but I had I have three stars in there waiting to be photographed, and they have taken a really long time to weave ends in on because I used that Karen Ogo scraps that I had, and it's bad enough if you do a star blanket where you change colors on every single round. But if you also are running out of colors in the middle of that round, then you've got, you know, that's four, one round, four ends. Um, so I, it was a lot of ends for those star blankets. And I got two of them complete, but I still have one left to do. But it feels good to have them done, you know. So... Maybe that would be, I also have a knitting project that I have been, um, has been just languishing for a really long time. Uh, but that one, I, I lost my notes. <laughs> I don't remember, uh, what I was doing or where I was on it. So that one would require some thinking and searching and uh, head scratching <laughs> would require a little digging.
Hi, Nancy. Yeah, Amy's having a tough week.
Hi, Hassa. So next month I'm going to do the Ridgy Didge, the adult Ridgy Didge blanket. Probably going to start that around the second week of November. to pick out all my outfits which I'm a little bit nervous about because what the heck is the temperature going to be like the weather's been so odd am I going to be cold am I going to be hot do I need short sleeves do I need a, I mean I don't even have a coat I don't think I'm going to take a little break at the top of this peak and see how much further I have to go. It's been about an hour. It's called the Six Day Ridgy Ditch. It's the next one I'm going to do. I've already done the um, Six Day Ridgy Ditch baby blanket. And so I'm going to do a... I'm going to do an adult size blanket. Like a full size blanket. 
but I'm going to do, I'm going to show how usually when I do a baby blanket pattern, it's just the baby blanket pattern. But when I do the full size pattern, I include like a chart so that people can change the size of it and change the yarn. And um, so I'm going to show how to swatch for that and how to measure the swatch and then how to um, determine how much yarn you need. And um, uh, show people how to do like a custom size. But I will be making a full size blanket. And I don't know if I'm going to commit to doing the whole thing on video again, because this took a lot longer than I was thinking it would. <laughs> So I might do some of it off camera or I might do it like on Zooms or something like that. But um, it is just a lot for me to sit in this chair for more than a couple of hours at a time. Um, so I'm limited to how much I can work on something. I can't just sit in front of the, you know, sit in front of the TV and veg out and, um, and just go. Also, at the beginning of this, I um, I explained everything. I did the whole thing tutorial style. So, Didn't I say I was going to stop and check and see how much further I have to go? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have six more. <sighs> Lemony. So how many people are crocheting all their hand knit or making all their gifts this year, doing handmade gifts for people? It smells like the Outer Banks here.
The winds are picking up a little bit. One time I was, um, I was on one of my, um, oh wow, that feels nice. I woke up in the middle of the night and the blinds in the bathroom were like making a noise and it scared me. I didn't know what it was because it's so quiet here. Hey, Nancy, I don't have a normal time that I come on. I don't have a set schedule, but I try to come on um, when I am doing a project like this. I will usually come on around seven at night, six or seven at night. Um, any Tonight, I didn't come on until 830, but I knew I only had this one round to do. So I thought, you know, I would probably be okay. To come on that late. Um, and um, I'm like halfway done. It's been an hour, so I think I'll be fine. But um, yeah, usually when I do come on, I come on at like seven. And I don't always come on this much. Um, I just decided, I don't know, last year I um, started thinking that I think what people want from me is for me to do the entire project. And so I started doing that. And I believe I did. I started doing that with the Christmas tree skirts last year. I did the entire Christmas tree star, superstar, and supernova tree skirts um, from start to finish online. I think I did the entire superstar shawl online also. I don't remember what all I've done. I've done the entire hexagon cardigan online on, on video. Um, so mainly you'll find me on here when I'm when like this, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this project from start to finish. Sometimes I'll do it like a crochet along post it as a crochet along but even that I haven't been doing as much because um, it's not a real crochet along it's uh, it's just me you know filming the entire process for people to follow along with so I feel like a real crochet along is when they which is something I've never done is when they, the designer, like, gives you the first day of the, you know, gives you the first part of the pattern, and then they give you the second part of the pattern, and then they give you the third part of the pattern, and, um, you know, like that. And I don't do that. I've never done that. Thank you, Cindy. How are you tonight? I did this edge on something else, but I think it might have been the Starro, Six Day Starro. I did something, something similar to this. I don't remember exactly because it feels familiar, um, but I don't remember exactly where I did this before.
Wow, that wind really just picked up all of a sudden. I wonder what... I have been ignoring the um, notifications from the Weather Channel lately. Because <laughs> it's just been so nice. Oh no, I feel like I hear rain. Oh, it's raining. What a bummer. Okay, I'm going to have to get up and close the windows. Darn it. Yeah, I can see the um I can see the drops hitting the screen. I probably should not have ignored <laughs> the Weather Channel. <laughs> Ooh, it's really picking up. Something's happening. All right, I'm gonna take just a second and close my windows. I don't want anyone to worry. I'll put it on three. I don't think it's really raining, but I'm going to check anyways. Oh wow, people are getting snow. Don't listen to my chair squeak. I'm so self-conscious about that. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Four left. Four peaks to go. I am on the outer banks of North Carolina. It's cold as heck where I am. It was in the 80s to get today. It's been really warm. It's been really nice. <sighs> I hate leaving home and traveling away from here when it's so nice here. I mean, it's just been gorgeous. And I feel like at this time of year... Um, I'm going to leave and I'm going to come back in a week and the weather's going to be completely different. Making hats, scarves, and gloves for a homeless shelter. Nice. We might have hit 40 today. Oh, it doesn't usually get that cold here. Not for very long anyways. I was worried that I might have to turn off my outside water when I leave, but I don't think it's going to get that cold.
I can't believe how the wind picked up like that. Almost there, guys. Thanks for following. What's the coldest? Um, well, it does get down into the, you know, 40s and 30s sometimes, but it doesn't stay there for very long. So like last year we had some really cold temperatures right around Christmas time and I did have problems with my pipes and stuff then, but it just... It gets down there, but it doesn't normally stay. So, and um, the winter before last, we had a ton of snow. It was crazy. I had been down here uh, one other time for like Christmas, Christmas time, New Year's Eve. Um time and uh, it snowed when I was here that time and I was like that was like I don't know 10 years ago or something it was before I lived here and it snowed and I was like oh my gosh I got to see snow on the Outer Banks like how cool is that how, how often do you get to see that like almost never and then I moved the year that I moved down here it snowed like crazy that first uh winter it was like feet of snow and uh I was talking to one of my neighbors and they were like yeah I've never seen it like this here Oh, so you brought the snow. <laughs> That's funny. Now, I lived in Hawaii for three years. And when I lived there, people would say, oh, I would miss the change of seasons. And I would be like, nope. I don't miss it. 80 degree weather every day. Like sunshine, flowers bloom year round. Like the ocean everywhere. Like what? No, I don't miss the change of seasons. I have palm trees. <laughs> and then um, we moved back to the East Coast, Washington, D.C. area. And I just didn't really like that area very much. And um, but my son and I, um, the first couple years that we were there, we would um have a little pity party the first time we saw like a, a like a, a leaf turn starting to turn be like oh summer's over winter's coming we'd have this little pity party and the snow in northern virginia the first year we were lived there we lived there was like insane more snow than they had ever had and we were like what the f is this you know uh we didn't sign up for this washington dc like it's not supposed to snow like this here and of course you know when it snows like that in places where it does it's not supposed to snow like that it's you know it's it's they don't have the resources to like shovel all the snow and people don't really know how to drive and stuff like that. I mean, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania. We learned how to drive in the snow. You didn't close, nothing closed, you know, like in uh, Northern Virginia, you have a couple of inches of snow and everything closes. Well, they got to where they couldn't close things because there was so much snow. 
um, yeah. So then there was that. Then I moved to New York and um, the see the change of seasons in New York in the Hudson Valley is incredible. It's so incredibly beautiful. Like that is like, okay, now I get it. You know, like now I get why, why people are like, don't you miss the change of seasons? Cause when it looks like that, it's just, it's really, really beautiful. And so I'm looking forward to that because I may, I don't know what the scenery is like in, um, you know, up North right now, if the colors are out or what it looks like, but, um, so I might get to see that, but that is really incredible. And it's a wonderful time to drive in, in, um, you know, in the Hudson Valley. It's, uh, it's incredibly beautiful. But then I started to kind of get used to the snow there. When I moved there, um, my landlord said, oh, it snows in May here. And I was like, shut up. No, I'm leaving. <laughs> It does not snow in May here. Please don't say that. And sure enough, it snowed in May when I was there. In April and May, it was snowing. It was like, what the heck is this? You know? Um, but I started to, um, I start I just where I lived when it snowed, it was really pretty. We had these little old-fashioned lamp I don't know if they were old-fashioned or if they were actually just old these old lamps on my street and I used to um take a little video of this lamp when it snowed across the street from me and it was just so pretty it was so so pretty and I also had a a job like a retail job and so when it snowed and I didn't have to go anywhere I was like this is actually great, you know, like the snow is really great. It is, um, you know, it's an excuse for everybody to stay home and slow down. And, and, uh, we all need that. There were, you know, many, many times where I felt like I, I just needed that. And so I, I started to love the snow again. I mean, I, there were a lot of, um, there was a lot of snow in Pennsylvania where I grew up. I remember these snowstorms with, you know, feet and feet of snow and we would go out and play in it all day. And, and I loved it. But when I moved, you know, when I got older and I moved away, moved South and I didn't have, you know, all kind of snow we would get would just be like little dustings, if any. And I, I got used to that and I didn't really miss it. Um, but yeah, when I lived in New York, I kind of learned to love it again. And now if it, when it snows here and I, where I live here, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm really close to the ocean. And so I just really think this is a wonderful place to be. And I'm full of wonder all the time. Like tonight I was in a zoom meeting and they called on me and I was like, I'm distracted. The moon is coming up. I just want to go see the moon come up over the water. Like I can't, I can't sit here. Like I have to go look at that. You know, it's just so wonderful. So when it snows here, I'm just like, wow, it's snowing at the beach. Like, let me go see what that looks like. What is that like? I'm just so fortunate that I get to be at the beach and experience snow. I don't know. It's just, and, and, and my little house is like, you know, it's built up on pylons. And so these houses are made to resist harsh weather. And so I just, you know, I'm up here in my house and the snow like blew up and covered the whole front of my house and my door and my windows. And I, you know, it was all piled up feet high. And I was just like, oh, wow. <laughs> Because I didn't have to go anywhere anyways. So I was just like, wow. Now I get to experience this, you know, um, and it's my, you know, my little house, like I said, is really sturdy and, um, it's like just kind of fun to be inside when the weather's bad outside, 
and it starts to blow and the house like shakes and I'm like, I'm all cozy inside with my instant pot going and, you know, sitting with my crochet, watching something on TV, you know, I don't know. I just, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Life is good. Uh, the last time I measured this blanket, it was about 70 inches across. Someone's asking me what size I'm making. Nancy said she's making hats and scarves. You know, I one thing, one nice thing about traveling, or I mean, I like to... Um, take hats when I'm traveling they're a nice little project to work on because it's like um you know quick and quick and dirty you can just like whip one up and there's not you know I have my go-to patterns I mean, maybe I'll take my I have a hat basket with a bunch of just like random yarns in it um ready and pom-poms and stuff maybe I'll just take that and work on some hats. Only two more points to go after this one. Saturday, it was 80, 87 and Sunday, sunny. Today just broke 50 and downpours. Yeah, I have a feeling that the nice weather is like on its way out. And that's why when I just don't feel like taking my trip because, I mean, not that I don't feel like taking it. I am afraid if I to go take my trip, I'm gone for a week when I come back. Well, I won't be gone for quite a week, but long enough to where I'm going to have to like worry about what's going on with my plants and, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know, the weather's going to be, it's going to feel different when I get back. And I just don't like, like packing up the house, you know? I have to put my beach chair away and I have to lock everything up and I have to close all the windows and set the, um, you know, figure out what to set the heat on, figure out if it's going to be too cold and I have to leave water running, you know, all that stuff. I don't like leaving my house for long periods of time. I used to really have this wanderlust, but um, I did a lot of traveling last summer. And after I drove from here all the way to the, um, all the way from the Outer Banks, I went to New York, I drove to New York. And then I drove from New York to, Ac to um, Akron, Ohio. And my mom lives very close to there. So I, I spent some time and visited my mom. And then from there, I went on to Chicago. I drove all the way to Chicago. And um, I went to the H&H &H America's uh, conference, trade show which was great. And then I drove back and took me two days to drive back. And it was fun. 
It was a beautiful drive back. I love driving and that was such a nice drive. But when I came home, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I think I'll just stay put for a while. <laughs> Oh, and then last month I went to um, Las Vegas with my sister and I had to fly and I freaking hate flying. I hated it. I actually considered driving to Las Vegas. I was like, I like driving. I'll just drive. Well, it's like a five day drive. It's like cross country, you know, so I was like, well, maybe not. I'll just fly. And I just I hated flying. It was really uncomfortable and I just hated it. So I never want to do that again. Um, and then I uh, came back from there and I went to New York with my other sister, one of my other sisters. I have three of them. And we went to see Peter Gabriel at Madison Square Garden and we stayed right in Times Square in New York City, and we had the best time. We had so much fun. I had fun with my older sister in Vegas, too. But I was so inspired by Peter Gabriel. He's like 70-something years old, and this is like his last tour. And I've gone to see him a bunch over the years. You know, I've been listening to him since the 80s, since college, and I've been so inspired. I've choreographed several dances to different Peter Gabriel songs. And um, and he played a couple of them at the concert. And it was just really, really meaningful. And um, one of his new songs, and my sister Tara, the, my youngest sister, she, I took her to a Peter Gabriel concert. She was like really young. Um, I was probably like... 22 which would have made her like 16 and I took her and one of her friends we went to see Peter Gabriel together and we had a great time and um you know so we just we wanted to go and do that again and she had she had been to New York before but she didn't really know how to like take the subway and how to like get around in New York and you know it can be daunting for somebody from uh, a small town in western Pennsylvania that's never been to New York before or only one time you know it it takes a little you kind of have to get used to taking the subway it can be scary so I was like oh we'll do you know like I'll I'll show you how to do all that stuff and we'll go stay right in New York and we'll have a great time. And so we did that and it was really fun. It was really fun. I really want to go back. Um, but yeah, one of his, um, one of Peter Gabriel's new songs, he released one song, um, from his new album on every full moon this year. So we're on like, you know, I think there's only one more to go after this. And um, he's released the whole thing. So there were songs at the concert that um, we hadn't heard yet because they hadn't been released. And one of them, and then it was the first one that was released after the concert, is called This Is Home. And it's just like my anthem now. I just love that song. It broke my heart when I heard it. Um, it was it just had so much meaning for me and um i felt really inspired i'm like here's someone create still creating you know making music into their 70s and if you know anything about peter gabriel he doesn't just put out albums like it's like one every 10 or 20 years you know um so anyways that's those were my travels uh recently and now I'm going back to um, New York, Hudson Valley again. But after I did the one trip where I drove all the way to Chicago and back, I was like, I think my wanderlust <laughs> is dying. <laughs> it's leaving me. <laughs> 
but I don't know. I still like traveling. I was actually was thinking, um, because I'd like to go back to H and H again next year. And there are some other things that I would like to do. Um, I'm next week I'm going to, um, I'm traveling to put up my choreography festival. So I'm going to keep doing that next year. I'm going to have a show in Austin, Texas. So I was actually thinking about getting, getting like a sleeper van or a small RV or something that I can sleep in and, and do my travels that way. Um, just be a little bit more comfortable and not be like staying in hotels and stuff like that. But we'll see. I don't know. I always have these ideas. I Before I moved down here, I thought, well, maybe I'll just get an RV and I'll travel around for a while. And I was going to, you know, I was going to go live here for a month, live there for a month, go live in these different places or get a, you know, get a bus and just travel around and, and, um, you know, live in an RV for a while. And then I thought it felt really scary to, um, not have a home base. So, and I was like, the first place on my list was to come down here. I was going to come down here and stay for like, this was going to be my first stop, you know, and stay for like a month or whatever. And I thought, well, I'll go down there and I'll, I'll get myself a house, um, down there. And then I'll, and then, you know, then I'll have a home base and then I can travel from there. So that was my plan at the time. But now I'm like, I don't know, do I really want to travel so much? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> uh but I just keep doing it. I just keep doing it. I don't know. I haven't had a pet in three years, either two years. Um, and I'd like to have pets again. I was, my last dog died. I had this cat and, uh, I was going to, take the cat on my travels, but my son ended up taking the cat. So I think it worked out for the best because I can't have pets. If I had had a pet, I wouldn't have been able to rent this place. So I think it all worked out for the best. Pets can travel. Yeah. I was trying to like leash train the cat, but um, yeah, it's just my son ended up taking him. Coming down to the end here. Yeah, if I ever get another cat, I definitely will train it to um, walk outside and experience the outdoors because my place is too small for... Um, cat to be cooped up in and um I'd like to get a dog and a cat and I would like just like the cat to be able to experience the outdoors
Would you put Wonder Bread bags on your feet to put your boots on for the snowstorm? Yes, for sure. We did that. Oh my gosh. Made my feet sweat so bad. <laughs> I hated that. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and the pants, the uh the pant the ski pants and the ski jacket and then the mittens with the string that goes all the way up your back. It was totally just like those kids in that movie, that um Christmas movie. My son and daughter-in-law go camping and use their van for sleeping. Yeah, I'm actually going to, I have these mattresses. I'm going to put one of them in my car for my trip um, this time because if I end up getting tired, I can just lay down in the back of my van. I have it. Um, I have like things to put in the windows and stuff like that, but I never really intended to like use that as a camper van but it is big enough for me to lay down in in the back if I need to um if I need to sleep when I'm on the road and I don't mess around like I drive a lot so I don't mess around if I start to micro sleep at all I pull over and I sleep and there have been times when you know sometimes I I'll, you know, I'll set out, it'll be a long, you know, like eight, nine hour drive. And I'll be like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll go as far as I can until I, you know, until I need to sleep and then I'll get a room somewhere and I'll sleep. And then I would go to get, you know, go to get a room in a hotel or something. And there, you know, there'd be no rooms or they'd be like $400, you know, like two, more than I wanted to spend on a room for the night. So then I would, you know, I would end up sleeping in my car. Um, but I don't like having to do that, but I'm going to, I'm going to go prepared in case. Um, and I'll, I'll pull over at like, uh, a, a rest stop or somewhere like that. And I'll, I'll pull and I'll go right under the lights. And then I have, I have things that I put in my windows that Da, 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 da. Did y'all see that? I cut the thread. I cut it. It is done. Ta -da. Dun, 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 dun. This is how much yarn is left. I don't think I could have done a whole other repeat with this much. I don't think it's enough. I think I would have it would have been yarn chicken and I think I would have lost and I'd be crying. But if I had had another um, cake of this, I would, uh, I would actually have done another repeat and made it a little bit bigger. I'm going to take this down. So you, you have a 25 foot pull behind camper. I don't want to do anything that big. I just want like a little sleeper van. It's just for road trips. I'm not going to live in it or camp. I'm going to take it on my trips and then I'm going to sleep in it instead of in a hotel. Hold on, let me... Here we go. It's taller than me. Not sure 70 inches is a real accurate measurement. There we go. Ta-da! Let 
Well, it's super beautiful. Thank you. I'm almost done. I still have ends to weave in. You know what I'm really excited to do is take out those markers. Just a reminder that it took me more than six days. Woohoo! All right, my friends. This has been so fun working on this project from start to finish on live. I hope you trust me to weave the ends in without you. Because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> on the live. I'm not going to do it today. Uh, but I promise I will. I won't leave it for years and years like I said on my other video. But y'all have a really wonderful night. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.